welcome, welcome all of you. And again, I'm so proud to be here. And I'm wearing glasses. It's not an age thing. <laughs> I'm in my late 20s. I just um, have bad vision. Limes 2022 Gala. You know, tonight we're here to celebrate our honorees, Kristen and Joey Farrell and Charlie Rosenberg, while also learning more about advances made in Lyme research and to spotlight Project Lyme's impressive achievements over the past year. To those of you who are new to Project Lyme, we are excited to introduce you to our mission, which is to eradicate the epidemic of tick-borne diseases through awareness and education support cutting edge science, and advocate for solutions to end suffering. Lyme disease is a bacterial infection transmitted through an infected tick bite. It's estimated that by close of this year, more than two million Americans will be suffering the disease lingering symptoms, complicating, complicating treatment. Lyme is often called, yes, we all know this, the great imitator because its symptoms mimic so many other health conditions. And again, I have had friends who have had Lyme and they were told it's menopause, it was told it's COVID, um, it's the flu. So the insane thing about this disease is it's very, very hard to target. And the range of Lyme symptoms are expansive and trying to figure out exactly what it is and if it is Lyme is overwhelming. And for those patients who are diagnosed early and correctly, the disease may present as flu-like symptoms, fatigue, fever, muscle, and headaches, and joint pain. But for the 30 to 40% who are misdiagnosed or diagnosed too late, persistent and chronic Lyme affects a multitude of organ systems, joints, and tissues, as well as cognitive impairment, sleep problems, and mood changes like depression and anxiety. But there is hope. And that is why we're here tonight. Please join me in welcoming Project Lyme Board co-chairs, Nan Kurzman and Jennifer Weiss-Munsky to the stage. What a great evening for Project Lyme. Tonight is about being all together, and it's been a long time, as Ali said, since we've been able to be together in one room. So here are just a few of our achievements of the past year. Building awareness, our social media programs expand weekly to include postings and news alerts for the community. I hope you've all gotten them through our weekly newsletter and increased presence on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and recently through newly created TikToks. So we have also hosted a series of popular webinars, including one in partnership with the NIH about congenital Lyme disease, which received a commendation from Congress, as well as offering insurance guidance in another webinar, and that is very needed by our patients. Seed funding and event support has gone toward new movies like The Monster in Me, which is having an upcoming NYC premiere, and those in development like Cindy Anderson, So Sick. We also support advocacy, and as a founding charter member of the Center for Lyme Action, we provided $150,000 of funding. Targeting congressional representatives, the 501c4 has tripled federal funding for Lyme research from $55 million to $153.5 million over the past three years. On the research front, one third of the money we raise is used to make grants through our research partner, the Bay Area Lyme Foundation. And I'm so sorry to say that COVID has felled them. Um, two of them landed in New York earlier today and tested positive. So we have a wonderful representative to tell you later about that program. And finally, for tonight's uh, summary, in an unprecedented effort, we produced a series of PSAs, which were distributed nationally on 42 TV networks, online via CNN, Fox, USA Today, and Hulu, reaching millions. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge two very special guests with us tonight, Jay Cross, president of the Howard Hughes Corporation, and Charlie Rosenberg, managing partner of Rosemark Management. Congratulations and our deepest appreciation to you both. Our Generation Lyme is a very special project, Lyme initiative created to empower people facing Lyme disease. The program serves over 3,000 patients through its more than 250 meetups, 
which provide a safe space where patients and their loved ones can feel supported, connected, and inspired. Uh, now I have the great honor of introducing you to tonight's final honorees, Kristen Farrell, founder of Kristen Farrell Home, and her son, Joey Farrell, who will join me on stage right now to, to share their story. You were diagnosed with Lyme in kindergarten, and then it sort of flared up again in 2015? So I first had Lyme around five or six years old, probably around kindergarten, which I don't really remember much of besides the kind of nasty cocktails my mother was putting in my applesauce, but... Um, what were you putting in his applesauce? <laughs> this could get Joey, really dark. you weren't dark. supposed to tell that part. Um, we were working with a homeopath at the time, okay. and he was five, so he couldn't swallow a pill. So the only answer was some liquid tinctures that I would mix into applesauce. So all of a sudden, he didn't like applesauce anymore. But um, Did but you we, know he had Lyme? Yeah, he okay. was actually diagnosed with ehrlichiosis and Babesia. And what, how, what did that feel like? Do you remember? I don't remember so much when I was that age, but it really had a big resurgence when I was about 16 in my freshman year of high school. Um, on Thanksgiving Day, actually, and I just, I thought I had the flu because I just couldn't get out of bed and I just felt extremely fatigued and foggy and pretty achy. If you, if parents came to you today and said, I have a child, my child's really sick, what do I do? What would you say? What, were, what are the steps? You know, I think the first question is, is it a new infection? If it is, I, I do believe in the antibiotics mm -hmm. um, approach for that. If you just had the tick and you go on doxycycline, it can be very effective. If it's chronic um, and it's been going on for years, you really have to dive in. And then I think it's, it's sometimes managing the mental game even more than the physical game, which, you know, Joey has gone down the path of meditation and breathing and all of those things help. I was going to say, there has to be a mental health component with it. If you're exhausted, if you can't get out of bed, it, it must connect to depression and anxiety and all kinds of other things, too, that are sub-symptoms of this disease. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's a big part, and it's, you know, sometimes that's the harder battle to be fought, mm -hmm. and it's kind of just a day-by-day -day thing, and making sure you have some type of support system to help you sustain the day-by-day pace. Um, so thank you for your insight and thank you for being such a great um, personification of a disease that you were able to somewhat beat into submission. Happy to be that. So thank you both of you, Joey and Kristen. Thank you. So I am Tara D'Amelia. I have been the head of communications for Bay Area Lyme Foundation for the past nine years. Since 2018, we have been honored um, to be working with Project Lyme, and I'm glad to announce tonight that Project Lyme has granted $1 million in support of Bay Area Lyme Foundation research initiatives. We really, we really couldn't be more grateful for your partnership and your support, and I want to just provide three really quick examples of how this money, your money, has helped foster research. So the first one is funds raised at the 2018 Project Lyme Gala contributed to a project at Cornell University in which um, Brian Crane, Dr. Brian Crane, had identified an antimicrobial treatment by inhibiting the, the um, flagella of a spearcat. This grant allowed Dr. Crane to publish his research findings, which then enabled him to apply for an NIH grant. And so we're thrilled to, to announce that Dr. Crane had received approximately two, a, approximately $2 million from NIH to continue this important, impactful research. Funds raised at the 2019 Project Lyme Gala, which was about a week before the whole world shut down. And Linda writes here, whew, I still can't believe the timing of that event and the fact that it got squeaked right in. So those funds supported Dr. Seshu at the University of Texas, whose project proposed to eliminate the survival of tick-borne pathogens between ticks and their hosts. 
And several weeks ago, Dr. Sestu published his findings, and he too is going to be receiving additional funding to keep pushing forward this important research, which will stop the transmission of Borrelia to mice and eventually, hopefully, to humans. More about that is on the Project Lyme website. In 2020, Project Lyme grants supported research at Northeastern University around the benefits of hydromycin A, which was in the news, you may have seen, showing changes in bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract that may be predictive of persistent Lyme. And so on behalf of Bay Area Lyme Foundation, thank you all for coming to this very important and fabulous event and for giving me the opportunity to share Linda Giampa's words with you about the tremendous partnership between Project Lyme and Bay Area Lyme Foundation, and hopefully one day we'll make Lyme disease easy to diagnose and simple to cure. Thank you.